Good morning, today. Today, today, today. Today we're going to use this simulation to explore position time graphs. So let's review what we've already covered. For starters, imagine we had a situation where the object was completely stopped. Let's say it stopped at negative six meters. What would that look like on a position time graph? Not very interesting. Notice where the object is relative to the zero. It's behind it. It's at the negative six meter mark to be precise. And the graph is a straight line. Slope of that line is zero because the object isn't moving. That's not interesting at all. So let's put the object back at the zero position and let's give the object some speed. Let's say two meters per second. We'll clear the graphs here, and let's see what that looks like. Notice it's a straight line with a constant slope. So when an object is moving at a constant velocity, we have a straight line with a constant slope. And the slope of that line would be the actual velocity of two meters per second. So this is what we've reviewed in previous videos. Now let's see what acceleration looks like. Okay, so we've started the car off at a position of zero. We've also given it an initial velocity of zero and an acceleration of two meters per second squared. Let's see. Notice that when we have acceleration in this case, the object was speeding up. The position time graph produces a curve. What if the object was slowing down? So let's make this eight meters per second and let's make this negative two. So the car starts off moving at eight meters per second, but every one second it'll slow down by two. Let's see what that looks like. Car is going at a high speed, and then it comes to rest. Let's see that one more time. Car is traveling at a high speed, and then comes to rest. So that's what slowing down looks like. Well, can we make it slow down and then speed back up? I think we can. Let's make the acceleration even more aggressive negative four. And so that's what that type of motion looks like. Let's make it even a little faster originally and let's make this negative six. High speed comes to a stop and then moves backwards. So this gives you a general idea of movement when an object is accelerating. Notice when acceleration takes place we have curves. And that's the main point of today's discussion. So here's our table of contents and we've covered all of these other topics in previous videos. For those of you following along in your notes, please turn to this page now. The main thing I want you to record is that when an object speeds up or slows down, when it accelerates, the position time graph will have curves. And so let's look at this graph for a moment. Notice it says here north. So in this situation, the object is definitely moving north. It starts at two meters north, and sometime later, it's probably around 15 or 16 meters north, over here. The object speeds up. Now, how do we know that? Well, let's compare the beginning part of the graph to the end part. And to make the comparison fair, we'll compare it over two seconds of motion. So notice at the very beginning, in the first two seconds, it barely moves. 
perhaps that's around half a meter. However, later on, from 8 to 10 seconds, there's significant motion. It's close to probably 5 meters. So we draw a line there and we calculate the actual rise versus the run and the rise versus the run. Well, that calculation is called average speed. And as you can see, this shallow slope represents a low average speed and this steep slope represents a high average speed. So in general, when we go from a shallow slope to a steep slope, we say the object is speeding up. In this situation, once again, the object is still moving north, starts at around five and a half meters, and ends up here at around probably 16 meters again, 15 meters. But this time the object is slowing down. How do we know that? Again, compare two seconds of motion at the very beginning. In the first two seconds, the car looks, if it's a car, looks to travel around three and a half meters. A little later on when we compare two seconds, again, it's not moving more than half a meter. And so if we take the slope, which is the rise over the run, that's the average speed. Here we have a high average speed because it's a steep slope. And here we have a low average speed because it's a gentle slope. So in general, we say when the slope is going from a steep slope to a shallow slope, the object is slowing down. And so continuing on with your notes, please try this practice problem, which involves plotting mini graphs. Some of the key phrases you're looking for are constant velocity, or speed has increased. So these are the five examples I'd like you to try right now. I'd like you to create a graph for each of these five examples. Please pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you've tried that. Let's look at the first example. Example A. At time equals zero second, a person's initial position is four meters north. So we put a dot at four meters north. Three seconds later, the person is at the position six meters north. Three seconds later, six meters north. And has traveled at constant velocity. So whenever you see the term constant velocity, that means you connect the two dots with a straight line. The slope has to be constant, basically. That's what that means. Let's look at example B. At time zero seconds, a person's initial position is three meters north. We put a dot there. Two seconds later, the person is at a position of one meter north. Two seconds later, one meter north. And his speed has increased. So the moment you see that phrase, the speed is changing, in this case, the speed has increased. That means we need a curve. So this is the curve we would use. When the speed is increasing, we go from a gentle slope to a steep slope. And that's shown with this ruler. Gentle slope to steep slope. So you could actually take your ruler and try this out for yourself. Shallow to steep, increasing speed. Example C. At time equals zero seconds, a person's initial position is seven meters south. South would be a negative position. And so here's seven meters south. The person walks north at a constant speed of one meter per second for two seconds. So every one second, the person advances north by one meter. One second later, one meter north. Another second later, one meter north. 
How do we connect those dots? Well, we use a straight line. Why do we use a straight line? Because the key phrase here is constant speed. Please also try examples D and E. And finally, let's look at plotting this graph. Neo starts at home, originally at rest and slowly accelerates for 2,000 milliseconds, moving a distance of 4 meters heading north. He then moves with a constant velocity of 4 meters per second north for 3 seconds. Neo then sees Agent Smith directly in front of him and decides to slow down. He comes to a stop in 3,000 milliseconds, traveling 5 meters north, while slowing down. Neo remains stationary for 5 more seconds and then decides to run away from Smith. In 2 seconds, he heads 2 meters south while accelerating. He then runs at 7 meters per second heading south until he reaches the reference point. So, a lot of information here. How do we plot this? Well, you take it one step at a time. So for starters, here's the graph I'd like you to set up. Make sure it goes all the way up to 20 meters. Actually, you'll need a bit more than 20 meters, probably 21 to be exact. And here's the frame of time I want you to set up. So position versus time graph. Here's the title, Neo's position while seeing Agent Smith. All right, Neo starts at home. So, we put a dot at zero comma zero. We'll assume his home is position zero. And slowly accelerates for 2,000 milliseconds, moving a distance of four meters. Well, 2,000 milliseconds is two seconds. And he moves a distance of four meters, heading north. So we put a dot at two seconds and four meters. And the question is, do we use a line or a curve to connect those two dots? What do we use? Well, the key phrase is accelerates. Automatically, acceleration means you need a curve. And so the graph would look something like this. It's speeding up, so shallow slope to a steep slope. Next, he then moves with a constant velocity of 4 meters per second north for 3 seconds. So it's constant velocity. That's an important term. And what does 4 meters per second north for 3 seconds mean? It means in 1 second he would travel 4 meters, 2 seconds, 8 meters, and 3 seconds, 12 meters. That's what it means. So one second later, if he starts at four, he ends up at eight. That's four meters per second. Another second later, another four meters. And another second later, another four meters. Line or curve, I think you know how to connect this. Key phrase, constant velocity. And it's a straight line. Now I'd like you to pause the video and try to finish off the rest of this question. Go ahead. All right, I hope you tried it. Here's the part where he's slowing down. He then comes to a stop, he speeds up, and then he's traveling at seven meters every one second. Seven meters every one second. The one thing with these graphs in general is that when there is a change in motion, that transition should be smooth. And what do I mean by that? Notice here that the slope of each side of this graph for the five second point is more or less the same. So the slope here and the slope there is more or less the same. That's the way it should be. The transitions should be smooth. Similarly here, where we're transitioning again, the slopes should be similar. This line should have a similar slope to that line where the transition takes place. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Have a great day.